Hello everyone. My name is Pratap. Welcome to our channel Cubex Academy. In this video, we are going to look at how to install Spark in local system using Docker. So we'll go through step-by-step -step process to install the Docker in our system so that we can start practicing the PySpark within our local system. Let's start. So we'll have sequence of steps which we have to perform. Step one, which is prerequisite, we need to install Git. Install Git. So if you don't have Git in the system, let's say, how do we install it? Now go to browser, any browser. Just go to Google and search download git and go to this link. You click on your, depending on your OS, select your corresponding OS. Now within this windows, you see the 64 bit, just click on this to download the exe file. Okay. That, okay. Once you, that is what you download. Now, once you download, you'll start having the file like this. You will see an installer. If you go to download, I already downloaded it. You will see the git folder. Exe. And, okay. Similar way, now once you do that, just double click and start installing it. Okay. Just continue with the instructions. I already installed. Now, if I just go to uh, command prompt and check, I just want to check whether, whether git is installed or not. Just open your command prompt. Just say git. So if you're able to get this, it does mean that git has been installed. Okay. Now let's close this. Now git is installed. What is my next step? Next step is we need to, we're installing with Docker, right? So we need to have a Docker desktop. So as a next step, install Docker desktop. So how do we do this? Again, just go to any browser and uh, go to Google and search for download Docker desktop. When you do this, or you can just say, just say Docker. If you go to Docker, I uh, install this, you can just say products, you can say Docker desktop. And here you can just say download, depending on your OS, you can just press, click here. If it is 64 bit, you just say download for Windows, you can just say download Docker desktop, and then download for Windows. Okay. Now, once you download, you will have a exe file downloaded which with this icon, Docker Desktop Install. Now, to install this, just double click and run this exe file. Okay. So, once you have the Docker installed, you will start seeing this app running in your system. Just search for Docker. You will see this Docker Desktop. I'm just trying to open. Here, if you go to my images, I have certain images already, but for you, it might be blank. There are no images. Now we need to set up the image for Spark Engine. So to do that, what I've done is I already created a Docker image for you, which you can download and set up that image. So to do that, you go to this uh, GitHub repo where I actually maintained the uh, Docker file for you. You just go to a browser, create new tab, just start accessing this URL repo, Cubex Academy for Databricks. So now this is the repo. So I'll have to clone this repo. So what I'll do, I'll just copy this uh, URL. So what I did is I just, in the desktop, I just created my folder. If you just go to the desktop, I just create a folder called Spark Docker. There's nothing in it. So inside this, I'll just go here. From here, I'll just try to go to command prompt. So I want to open this path in the command prompt. Just say CMD inside that, just say enter. It opens it. Now you just say git clone and this path. So this will basically clone all your git repo files in your local system. Once this is done, 
you should start seeing all the files here cubex databricks academy you can close this up now you go to this there is something of uh, the fifth number the pyspark now within this there is a folder called setup pyspark locally using docker just go inside this go inside this subfolder again pyspark jupyter lab 3.5.3 now, this is the Docker file which we go to use it for setting up the, our uh, Docker in the local system. So, from this, I'll, I'll let open this path in the command prompt. Just select your address bar and then say CMD. So, if you see, it will open up a command prompt with this path already enabled. So, we are already in this path. Okay. So, once we are in this path, what you do is in this here, I have given a readme file in the same folder. Just open this readme file. Just open with notebook, notepad or something. This is the command you got to run. This is the first command you have to run. So Docker build. This will basically build your image for you. Just copy this. Go back to this command prompt. Just copy, paste this. And then run. Just say enter. This will start building up your Docker image for you. Good. So then once that is done, if you go to Docker desktop, in the images, you'll start seeing an image called Cubex Academy Jupyter uh, Lab, PySpark Jupyter Lab. Okay, good. Now, based on this image, let's create a container. So just say click dot. Now you use the next command. Go to the same command prompt. I can just clear this. This. Then give this a command. Then execute. Now this is so. This is the Docker. Okay, it has created a container for you. This is the container which is running in. Now if you go to my uh, Docker desktop. If you go to containers, you will start seeing a container running in. This is your D6. This is the name, right? D5, D57568. This is your D5. This is a container. Now, this container started running. Now, if you go, to, if you just click on this container, you will see a uh, yes, like log which says 127.0.0.1.888. This is nothing but we have this Jupyter notebook running in our local system in the port 8888. Eight, eight, eight. You can go with Chrome or any, any browser you like. I can just close off all this. So I just want to open my browser. Get into localhost. And what is the port? 8888848. When you get into this, this is where you have the Jupyter notebook running for Spark. Now it will ask you for the token, right? It is asking for the token or password. So what you do is, you basically copy the token here. Uh, you can just copy it here. This is our token. Just copy it. So I just clicked it, I think. Just copy this token and paste your token here. So when you're copying it, it's like token equal to it from here. This is the complete string you got to copy. And just click sign in. You're able to open the notebook. Now we're done. So here we can start creating our uh, Spark programs, PySpark programs. And then now what I once we have set up, I just want to test whether my entire setup is working fine or not. Okay. So what I do, let me just create one folder to uh, organize all my programs. I'll just say create folder here. Say I'll just say Cubix. I'll go inside this. Inside this, I just want to create my program. I can just say create file, or you can just create Python file from here. Okay. Okay. Just let's create a Python file. Here we're just trying to test whether my Docker, the what we have installed, is working fine or not. So what I'll be doing, we'll just do a simple program where we'll just create some Spark session create some sample data frame and then try to see the data in the data frame. That's it. So to do that, let me just go. I don't know how to write. So let's see how do we write the program for it. So what I'll do, just go to Google. So let's open the documentation for PySpark. Just search for Spark. Get to the official documentation of Apache Spark. So go to documentation, the latest release. Our Docker is now within this API. I want to work on Python. I want to work on Spark using Python language. Now, this is what 3.5 point. That is the Docker we have installed with the latest version. Now, go to the API references. So, whenever you want to write a, a Spark program, the starting point of the Spark uh, program is your Spark session. So, which we'll see in another session about what is Spark session, but how do we create Spark? Now, just go to Spark session here. Or if you go to core classes, you'll see something called Spark 
pyspark.sql.spark session. This is what I will have to initialize. Now, if I have to use this Spark session, this is actually from this class, so I need to import from here. So what I'll do, I'll go to this notebook. I'll say from from pyspark.sql import what? What do you want to import? I would like to import this Spark session. Just copy this and paste it. I would like to create a session. Now just go here. Now there is a sample code. We'll see later how to do it, but I can just copy this Spark session code, which I can use it here. So I'm just saying I'm creating a session called Spark with the name Spark and using this function Spark session dot builder with the master is nothing but I'm trying to connect to local Spark engine. If I just say star, it depends on maximum number of cores which are allowed. I don't need any configuration. I'm just giving my app name as my, my first app. And then we use a function called get or create to create. We, this will, what does this do is, if there's an already session available, it tries to get the session or it creates a new session for us. Just let's try to run. You see this status here, now it is running in. You see the star indicating that this cell is running now. Let it run. So I'll try to view this in presentation mode. So it is more, uh, it looks in more. I can close this out so you can see the full screen. Now it is running, it's creating a session for us. Let's wait. Yeah, now it's now once session is created, I just want to check whether the session is just I execute the cell with this part. Now I can just say run the cell. I'm just you executed this part. I just want to see the definition of that uh, session which is created. Now it says Spark session is in memory context so and so, and you can see the UI it means when you perform certain operations using this uh, Spark session, all the operations can be viewed in this UI. You can just click this which will open another tab, which runs in separate port. It, uh, I can just replace this target uh, with the local host. Okay. 404. Here you can basically see all the jobs which is running uh, with the Spark session, what you created. All the jobs can be viewed at this UI here. Let's not worry now. We'll just see that later. Now, I just want to create some sample data frame, like employee data frame, EMP data, I'll say. I'll just create EMP data. So it's just like it's a list of list. So I'll just create simple data like employee ID and employee name. That is one row. And I want another row of another employee E2. And then I just want to create another employee, say Sruti. And this is my data actually. Then I just want to create some schema for this which is having uh, EMP number, which is a string. And I have EMP name, employee name, which is again a string. For this is the scheme I've got, okay? So let me just execute this. So with this, I've created data and the schema. Now I'm going to create a data frame now. I'm say EMP underscore DF, which is a data frame. So I'm going to use a Spark session to create my data frame. Just use a Spark dot create data frame. If you see in the documentation, we'll be having a function which says spark SQL dot data frame. This will basically help you to create. This is the function I'm going to use to create my data frame. If you go down, you say spark dot create data frame. Okay, that is what I'm doing here. So create data frame, which needs data. Data is equal to the data what is there in my variable EMP underscore data, which is a list of list. And then it expects a schema, and I'm going to give the schema which is defined in the scheme. I just defined a schema as a DDL. We'll see the different, uh, there is another way of doing it, but I just, for now, it's okay. We're just testing whether my installation is working fine or not. Yeah? And you see the Spark version is 3.5.3 .3 is what we have set up, latest version. Now it is executed. Now I can see the schema of this data for EMP underscore df dot print. I can use this function to see the schema of this data frame. So it's got scheme of employee number and employee name. Another way of doing it is EMP underscore DF dot, I can just say schema. This is other way of looking at the schema of the data frame. I just want to see EMP underscore DF dot show. I just want to see the data. Now. Just let's see the data. When I see the data, it is, it is this is an action, which is basically going to trigger my job. I can observe the job here. We'll see it once it is executed. It is still running. I 
Okay, I see the employee data printed out. Now, when when I when I when we basically perform this action, it would have performed executed some jobs in the back end. We can see if you go to SQL data frame, it will show you show string, which is showing you, and it has performed some jobs. Now, let me just get in. You can see the DAG, what is created in, what is the, uh, what was the logical path it has executed this to show you the data. It means now your uh, engine is working fine. This is what I wanted to show. How do we basically set up a uh, Spark engine in the local system using Docker? Thank you all. I hope if you like this video, I want you all to subscribe uh, my channel and also uh, forward the same information to your friends and ask them to start using this channel where you'll be getting a lot of uh, uh, information on a uh, lot of technologies on L a a Gen AI or Spark or uh, data engineering, all these videos. Okay. Thank you very much.